And welcome back to Hannity. So earlier today, we went to Capitol Hill. We sat down with five of our nation's lawmakers, Representatives Louis Gohmert, Mark Meadows, Marsha Blackburn, Scott Perry, and Jim Jordan. Now, I asked them about how they will help implement President Trump's agenda and much more. Take a look. Let me start and go back a little bit. When Congress said they would repeal and replace Obamacare, and it didn't get done, and they didn't use the power of the purse, did that cause part of the creation of Trump? In 2014, they said they'd stop unconstitutional executive amnesty. Was that part of the creation of Donald Trump? Well, you bet it was. That, it was a string of unbroken promises, um, uh, broken promises, rather. We didn't keep our word, and that absolutely gave rise to Trump. But it was this feeling that arose, you know, when the Tea Parties reared up, or when the Democrats let the country down, forced Obamacare through, and a bunch of other things, spiking the cost of energy. Obama continued to do that, and we really didn't stop it. Mark, let me ask you, I, I saw a recent interview with John Boehner, and John Boehner said, well, they want to shut down the government. It's not going to work. He was kind of mocking those that wanted to use the enumerated power of the purse. Was he right? Well, we've, we've got to use that power. That's the only power that we have, mm -hmm. Sean. And when you really look at it, it, it really comes back to that deficit of trust. And that's kind of what you were talking about is the American people have lost trust that elected officials will come to Washington, D.C., campaign one way back home and come up here and legislate a different way. Well, you have we've, symbolic votes to repeal a lot. We do. You know, and, and what we really need to be about right now is about really uh, upholding our promises to the people, even if it sends us Home. And I think that that's the key. Sometimes we're worried more about our own job security than the job security of Americans across uh, from coast to coast. Was, does that mean term limits would be a good idea? I'm, I'm all for term limits. And Everybody so, uh, limits? you know, I think yeah. when you really Marsha, look at that, I, I never wants to leave. As you have term limits, <laughs> we don't want to lose you. Yeah. You got to have term limits yeah. for the bureaucrats. That's, they that's have more the power secret. than anybody yes. in this city. You got to do the that. That's the swamp, the bureaucratic. You got to do that at the same right. time. Yeah, you've got to make certain that there is a way to get in side of the bureaucracies, because if you want to truly reform the size, the scope, and the cost of the federal government, you have to be able to reach in there and eliminate positions that have outlived their usefulness and to reshape how these departments and agencies work. Well, that brings up Donald Trump's proposal, which is a 20 percent reduction in the labor force, if Correct. you will, non-military. And he's also talking about a 10 percent across the board cut in government. You know, I love that because I so, every yeah. year, and these guys all support. I know your bill because you and I talk about it a lot. Yeah, one percent, two percent, five percent. But see, you have to do that in discretionary spending, and begin to right size this, and then go drill down on some of the entitlements and begin to pull it out there. But Sean, I tell you what, when you look at the operational cost of all of these agencies, I don't care what the agency is. There is a lot of waste fraud that is in there. Abuse. There is a lot of fraud. There is a lot of abuse. And what we need is one person who it is their job to go dig down on that and work with us in Congress to root it out. This is our shot yeah, at I really getting you. it done. We won't and, get and, it again. If, well, That's right. That, this is our shot. Congressman Perry, if if you look at the interim period between Donald Trump's victory and his inauguration on Friday, there was $1.7 trillion debt increase by the Republican Party. Wow. Yeah. That's as much debt as Obama gave us in eight years. Why would Republicans, who are supposed to believe in limited government, that's supposed to believe in balanced budgets, why would they support that? So it's a vehicle. This is what we're told. It's a vehicle. It opens the... It it opens the gate to repeal Obamacare. And many of us, I would think every person sitting here said, well, if it can be $9.7 trillion, why can't it be balanced? If it can be this number, why can't it be any number we make it? And we, what we constantly hear is, well, the other body won't vote for that. To which I would say, well, if, they, if this is just a number and just a vehicle, if they won't vote for it now, what are they going to do when it's real? I might have read this wrong, but don't we have 
the majority in that other body? That's exactly <laughs> right. So yeah. hopefully this is building the pressure. But I don't think any person sitting here is going to vote for a, a real budget. Look, we all want a balanced budget. Probably everybody here is either prime sponsored or co-sponsored a balanced budget amendment because that's probably, other than the Constitution, right. the fiscal issues is what brought every single person sitting here to this place. And, and you're the founder, Jim, of the, the Freedom Caucus. Mark took your presidency away, by the way, <laughs> chairmanship <laughs> away. And, but you, you were the original chairman. Yeah. And the Freedom Caucus, I think, in large part, was a check to the Republicans if they were too establishment or if they weren't yeah. adhering to their principles, correct? No, our, our mission statement talks about the countless number of families who feel like this town's forgotten them. Our job is to remember them and fight for them. People ask us all the time, what should we be doing now with President Trump and the fact that we, we control all of Congress? Do what we told the voters we were going to do. Imagine that. Just do do, that. Yeah. do what they sent us here to do. And you think, you think about the two issues that galvanized support for President Trump during the campaign. It was fair to respond to the executive amnesty, and it was a trade deal that didn't actually do what was best for the country. Those two issues, along with Obamacare, but those two issues, when we failed to do what we had told the voters we were all about on the amnesty in particular, Obama signs that executive order. We come in office saying we're going to fight tooth and nail, the speaker's, former speaker's words, and then we don't do it. That's when Trump took off and then when, when the President Trump talked about trade deals that are good for America. Free trade, but good for America. That's 